The last time I talked about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I explored the subtle and not so subtle meaning behind Charlie's musical The Nightman Cometh, and if you haven't seen that video you should totally check it out. But ever since, you guys have pestered me to talk about Dennis Reynolds. Many popular fan theories believe that Dennis, the arrogant, obsessive, narcissistic, self-declared golden god, is actually a serial killer. And it's all because of the show's major emphasis on the implication. Embedded within the humour and dialogue are again many subtle and not so subtle references that link Dennis to some sadistic and unorthodox fantasies that we're going to explore in this video. But listen, you, you would consider me a pretty methodical person, wouldn't you? Oh yeah, like a serial killer. <laughs> serial killer, I like that. <laughs> and since this is a theory, we're going to start by reaching as far as humanly possible to the FBI's methodology of criminal profiling. Now firstly, let me clarify, we are dwelling in the black gallows humour of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The show makes many references to murder, rape, incest, cannibalism, necrophilia, and the list of taboo subject matters goes on and on. So just remember, this is the insensitive nature of its humour, so if you don't like it or can't take the joke, stop watching now because you aren't going to like where this is going. Okay cool, got that? Right, back to the video. Criminal profiling is an investigative method of analysis to establish identifiable characteristics within crimes and criminal behaviour to use as a means of prevention. In the FBI guidelines, serial killers fall under one of two but arguably three forms of conduct, disorganised, organised and mixed. Disorganised is uncontrolled, spontaneous and involves very little planning, with the killer not considering their actions and rarely making much of an effort to hide evidence or the victim's body. These kinds of killers are considered to have poor social skills, lack intelligence or are mentally unstable, usually struggling to maintain relationships and are ultimately isolated from the rest of society. But where I want to turn your attention to is the disturbing world of the organised killer, one that is in control and has meticulously planned their operation. Victims are usually specifically based on variables such as gender, lifestyle or ethnicity. Organised killers tend to overpower their victims, choose isolated or unpopulated locations and come prepared with their necessary equipment. Tools! Tools! Duct tape, zip ties and gloves! I have to have my tools! They might even be intelligent, take trophies from the crime scene, and usually keep up to date with the news coverage regarding their crimes. Some even appear non-threatening and manipulate their victims, with many being socially competent, self-aware, but driven by frustration, depression or some sort of anxiety or agenda. Think of this as John Wayne Gacy, Charles Manson, The Zodiac, or this guy. This is Ted Bundy. Bundy is considered one of America's most notorious serial killers, executed for confessing to killing at least 30 young women and girls during the 1970s, yet the actual body count is undetermined. He would lure female victims into his car, take them to secluded locations where he would assault and kill them, with many being raped either in life or after death. In some cases, Bundy would even return to the scene of the crime with the corpses to perform sexual acts. Okay, so you're probably thinking, why am I telling this? Well, the important point about Bundy's crimes wasn't the acts themselves, but the personality behind it all. Ted Bundy was an extremely intelligent, charming and handsome man who simply blended in with the rest of us. In many psychology or criminology classes, he's used as a primary example of how generalised we perceive twisted killers to be. That I couldn't control it anymore, that these barriers that, that I had, had been, uh, I had learned as a child uh, and had been instilled in me were not enough to hold me back with respect to seeking out and, and harming somebody. Really. How could a man of such well-spoken sophistication, likability, elegance and groomed appearance commit such sick and sadistic acts of murder, rape and necrophilia? I mean, you'd assume that would be the work of Ed Gein. Well, that charisma that he carried was his most invaluable tool. He could manipulate many girls into falling for him because of how charming and attractive he was. A bit like Dennis Reynolds. But, uh... I don't want to waste any more time here, so... No man left behind! God damn it, Mac! There is no denying Dennis's physical attraction and charisma. He's excessively vain and obsessive about his appearance, and in constant need for sexual approval. There are several occasions in which his sexuality and attractiveness dominates his attention for entire episodes. Let me tell you something. I haven't even begun to peek. But he has this distorted sense of perfection about himself, and believes that people practically bow down to him. In fact, he goes as far as to declare himself as a figure worthy of being worshipped. Yet, disturbingly, he emits intense aggression when people question him or he doesn't get his way. I swear you would be of more use to me if I skinned you and turned your skin into a lampshade. 
He constantly wants to be in control, even getting people to sign contracts so that his dominance is objective and physically unquestionable. Why do you always want people to sign creepy documents? <laughs> well, Frank, once something's in writing, that means it's set in stone. Then no one can do anything to stop me. He's smart and cunning. In fact, his minor in psychology makes him assume that he's qualified enough to psychoanalyze the gang and even control their lifestyle, such as the size pills he gives Mac purely because of how disgusted he is by fat people. At his core, Dennis is emotionally manipulative. Whether it be as simple as using an onion to make him cry or even devising his own system of seduction, there is no denying that everything I just mentioned fits the profile of a deranged, organized sociopath. You like it? Yet, his obsession with lust drives the dysfunctional heart behind his character. He tapes every sexual encounter he has, but ultimately his relationships are shallow and based on a lack of empathy. In fact, he relies on sexual dependence. He's hypersexual, constantly driven by sexual urges, and possibly suffers from erotomania, which is the delusion that he's convinced someone's in love with him, usually by perceiving himself within a higher status and thus assumes those of an inferior status must desire him. In fact, erotomania can fall into the category of those suffering from schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, but I'm not a psychiatrist, so I'm going to steer clear from that. Instead, I want to turn your attention back to Ted Bundy. Bundy's pathology was debated by many theorists, but many contemporary psychiatrists believe that he suffered from a narcissistic personality disorder, which sees an individual have a dramatically inflated sense of self-importance, a need for admiration, a lack of empathy towards others, and the individual is said to mask their low self-esteem with supreme confidence, a bit like Dennis Reynolds. Just a couple of people who totally got off. Bro. If you haven't made the connection by now, I'm comparing Dennis to Ted Bundy. In fact, the show isn't unaware of its references to real life serial killers and psychology. For example, Ted Bundy decapitated several victims and kept their heads in his apartment as a souvenir of the event. In the ironically titled episode Mac is a Serial Killer, the gang finds severed heads in the real killer's fridge. And then in Charlie McDennis 2, Dennis's sculpture of preserving love is misconstrued as a head in a box. This is not a woman's head in a box, you sick freak. This is a woman's head in a freezer. Earlier in the Mac is a Serial Killer episode, when Dee and Dennis plot to hypothetically kill the waitress, Dennis is disappointed by the realization that they weren't actually going to kill her, and then remarks on the good work of John Wayne Gacy, the organized killer clown who raped and murdered boys in the 1970s. But the most startling reference is that on several occasions, he threatens to skin characters alive and then posing as Brian Lefebvre, he seeks the sexual thrill of wearing another man's skin. You're not Brian Lefebvre. I'm not one. These instances relate to the mentally unstable and inept killer Ed Gein, one of the most disturbing accounts of murder in American history, who subsequently went on to inspire the creations of Buffalo Bill and Leatherface. Yet, if we take all these references and connect them to Dennis's behavior, the idea of him being a serial killer adds up. He's obsessed by his need for control and doesn't have any real empathy or feelings. In fact, it isn't until he sees his mother's corpse does it trigger him to cry, but his constant force of manipulation drives his abnormal tendencies. You're not gonna get away with this. Oh yeah, I will. I'll get away with it. For example, he threatens to sleep with the waitress in a bid to get Charlie to do what he wants. He even subtly seduces a drunken Charlie to follow him to bed for different reasons. He suggests to the lawyer about frame banging his wife to keep her quiet, which is basically rape. And then there's the Dennis system, which solidifies his meticulous planning on how he seduces women. That, my friends, is the key to winning any girl's heart. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, he doesn't help himself by describing his implication, which in the latest season is mirrored by his sister Dee, who has her own plan of seduction, which involves her basically using her sexuality to blackmail men into sleeping with her. Yeah, I should definitely see a doctor. Now, let's get serious for a moment. Dennis being an actual serial killer misses the whole joke of his character. He's supposed to come off as a creepy, sadistic predator because his character genuinely believes that women find that attractive about him. Well, that's not supposed to happen. The joke is the implication, not the actuality. If he were a killer, that would ironically kill the point of his character and thus the overarching joke. Deep down, 
Dennis doesn't intend to be the bad guy. Most of the time he's attempting to combat his fragile insecurity through his superiority complex by mocking and belittling the failures of others while remaining in complete denial of his own mistakes. Dennis is aware of his methodical nature, but the real irony is how he's oblivious to how his behaviour affects those around him. His delusional confidence and erotomania makes him assume that he's this irresistible god that everybody desires to have in their life. He genuinely believes that he is a god among men. However, when he's called out on his superficiality, he loses his composure and panics at the reality that he's not really in control, sparking him to act aggressively and irrationally, which is the real horror of his character. Are you saying that you have a collection of skin luggage? Of course I'm not, Dee. Don't be ridiculous. Think of the smell. You haven't thought of the smell, you bitch! He doesn't quite tip over the edge just yet, but while this is all just harmless fun, just remember. If the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the right. thing is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. 